What else do the Bears need? I, the simplest way to put it is Caleb Williams, I think, is the closest thing we've seen to Aaron Rodgers. And, I mean, we literally saw Aaron Rodgers own the Bears. He literally said, I own you to the Bears. And if we're all comping Roma Dunze to Devontae Adams, I'm like, just Roma Dunze, Caleb Williams, get Chicago its own Aaron Rodgers, Devontae Adams thing. Like, I, I can't think of something more cathartic than for Bears fans to see something like that, like finally having one of their own. Because the Bears have never had a good quarterback ever. God. By I'm the same kidding. token, think about how damaging it would be to be promised that and then both Caleb and Rome are bad. Losing the football. It would destroy Metropolitan Dude. Chicago. Oh. While like Jordan loves throwing to Dontavian Wicks. No problem. That, Here we go. The so Panthers like, that's a would good be like, point. thank you. Thank you for we're, doing that. We're like underrating how the stakes of this draft for Chicago. The Bears are like 100 years old. They've never had a good quarterback. I'm not being exaggerate like jay cutler was 500 as a starter jim harbaugh was better on the colts than he was for the bears like he went to the colts they gave him comeback player of the year he didn't even get hurt he just was on the bears he got come rex grossman uh, super bowl erasure yeah. <laughs> please jim mcmahon won this the 85 super bowl jim mcmahon said chicago's where quarterbacks go to die like that's a quote from the best bears qu quarterback in bears history the bears have <laughs> never had a four thousand yard passer the franchise record for passing is 3800 yards it, caleb williams can so easily set the single season passing record for the Bears as a rookie. But also to Solik's point, if he's like, if he's good, Caleb will be the biggest Chicago athlete since Michael Jordan. If Caleb's bad, I think people will stop being Bears fans. It's funny to me that like the most embarrassing teams in the NFL right now are like the New York Giants, the <laughs> Chicago Bears, like these big, great, like historic cities. Uh, I don't know why. The, the Jets, New York Jets and the New York Giants. What's going on with that? And then we got the Green Bay Packers over here. And until this season, Kansas it was also City like Chiefs. the Kansas yeah. City Chiefs in, yeah. in Eastern Missouri, Buffalo, Cincinnati. Yeah. Like that's what people are like NFL rigged. I'm like, OK, they sent Trevor Lawrence to the Jacksonville Jaguars. And you think this thing's rigged instead of the Jets? <laughs> right. right. OK, they're really bad at it then. It really has been a great run for like the non, you know, A tier well, cities in sports. It, we said this before last season. Like I, I last season was the bizarro season because we're talking about Cincinnati and Buffalo Super Bowl contenders. The Jaguars are supposed to be really good, and yeah, it's like it. It all these teams that we grew up with that are terrible. Which city's fan base are we about to get nineteen mentions from? Because we were like, "Oh, you think Jacksonville's not a major city?" Like, yeah, <laughs> largest city in <laughs> Sorry, America by bad. largest city in America by geography. By is size, is what Jacksonville, Jacksonville by uh, really? square mileage. Yeah, really. Yeah. How Florida. big is it? I, I, I it's bigger than it. L.A.? Well, There's it no depends way. who you count, because L.A., it's like... L.A. is massive. Yeah. L.A. is massive, but Jacksonville is large. But also, what you think of as L.A. is like I'm doing, different cities. I'm doing largest United States cities by area. And the it's top LA, four, the top four are all in Alaska, which is cheating. So, like, oh, this is all the city. All this <laughs> over. This is the city. No. That shouldn't count. I need a better list than this Wikipedia list. Fred's cabin out there. That, that counts. LA is 500 say, square miles. Jacksonville is 840. Oh, wow. After the four Alaskan cities of Sitka, Juneau, Wrangell, and Anchorage, there's a fifth city, Tribune, Kansas, and then the sixth one is Jacksonville. So of cities I deem real by my objective measures, <laughs> Jacksonville is number one. Really? That's bizarre. What the hell's going on in Tribune, Kansas? <laughs> <laughs> they got room, baby. That's <laughs> right now. I've never even heard of Wrangell, Alaska. I dude, Alaska. It's like you're seeing the maps of Alaska on America, and it's just like larger than Texas by a lot. Not even close. They're the last state that would ever get a professional sports team, right? Yeah. This. Yeah. Well, probably. Yeah. Yeah. Right. It'd be very inconvenient. I mean, I guess you could say like Hawaii, but that's not South like that's Dakota. At least the weather is predictable after the <laughs> flight. <South Dakota. laughs> like, like, let's go play on the, let's go play. I don't even know what the capital of South Dakota is off the top of my head. Uh, Bismarck? No. Yeah. Yeah. Bismarck is North Dakota. North Dakota. South Pierre. Dakota. Yeah, South uh, Dakota is Pierre. Oh, Pierre. Oh, I said St. Pierre. Dude, I'm so good at state capitals. Is it Pierre I, or St. Pierre? I just added a touch of class on it, you know. Oh, no. If it's not. Is it Check. I, think it is. I think it is. It's just right up here. I used to know all of the capitals wow. of all the countries in the world. And by used to, what I mean to say is in all high school, I had no friends. All yeah. the countries and in the so world? Would, all the countries? Yeah, so I, oh, wow. I would just memorize things because no one would talk to me at lunch. <laughs> uh, and uh, <laughs> so I had like, like, Sitting over here uh, like he's Stephen fucking Glansberg. 
That's because anytime somebody so came like up to you, Ben, Ben was just sitting to himself going like, <laughs> uh, Uzbekistan, Afghanistan. <laughs> 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 oh, I get that good. Burkina Faso. Afghanistan is Kabul. <laughs> what's what's uh, Georgia? Tbilisi. What's uh, what's Uzbekistan? Dude, that was so fast. <laughs> <laughs> Uzbekistan I, I, is, um, I don't know, Uzbekistan. It's like Ashgabat or something like that. New Zealand. New Zealand is, is Wellington, I think. Nice. Heck yeah. Christchurch is the city in New in uh, New Zealand, though. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Yes. I also did pi up to like 720 digits, man. I was vibing. 720 digits of pi? Yeah, but at the peak, at the peak, I couldn't possibly do that now. Wow. <laughs> that is astonishing, I got to say. <laughs> we might make you do that at the live show. <laughs> All right. I'm so sorry. I'll get I'll get I'll, I'll, I'll get back to practicing. Okay. All right. Let's get, let's get on back on the, on track here. Minnesota Vikings. They have the 11th <laughs> pick and the 23rd pick. They have nothing else until the fourth round. Six and a half is their win total. Uh, they have the worst odds in the division. Seven to one. High fits. What do the Vikings need? Obviously, a quarterback. Yeah, I, the the cards are on the table. Like you know, you ever play like poker with someone and you're like, hey, you're bleeding. Like you could just see their cards. Like the Vikings just have two first and they want a quarterback. And so I, I mean, we could talk about other stuff, but they're going to trade a bunch of picks for quarterback. And I wanted to ask you guys, I feel like this is the, like, I, I was like, what's the best landing spot for a rookie quarterback to succeed in the last like 10, 15 years? Cause I was looking Russell Wilson, go to the Legion of Boom Seahawks, Loki Kirk Cousins going to Washington, not for the players, but for like seven head coaches on that staff. Mahomes. Uh, Mah- yeah. Mahomes to the Andy Reid chiefs that had already won the division and they had Kelsey and Tyree kill. You have Dak going to Dallas with the best offensive line of the league. And then I would say Brock Purdy, uh, a couple years ago with Debo, Brandon Ayuk, Christian McCaffrey, Trent Williams at left tackle, and Kyle Shanahan. It's hard to say like p- things like Brock Purdy because like every last pick in the draft is likely going like a lot of these like later on guys are going to good teams. So it's like there's a million yeah. quarterbacks who have gone like, to Tanner good teams. McKee ended up but, at yeah, a crazy good spot when the right. Eagles drafted him. Yeah. Fair, but I, I guess but the Vikings are on that list, right? Like it, Justin it should be Jefferson first round guys. Yeah, but Justin Jefferson at receiver, Jordan Addison at receiver, TJ Hawkinson, another thir- first round pick. He's coming off an ACL. And then they have Christian Darisol was a first round pick at left tackle. Brian Neal was a second round pick at right tackle. Like it, good. this is an incredible team. And I'm like, I, I think that this is probably the best spot for rookie quarterback since Patrick Mahomes in 2018. I don't remember. Like, this is an unbelievable situation for whoever goes there. Like, if you could just be like, take a job and not be drafted, if you're going to work, if you had offers from all these places for equal money, you'd go to the Vikings. I, I agree. Let me devil's advocate real quick. I think that like the Addison, Hawkinson, Jefferson thing is pretty impeachable, right? Like, they got like a really nice trio of pass catchers. Darison O'Neal, there's some great, great tackles. There's a big difference between like calling an offense for an established quarterback and like developing a, a young guy. And I think you 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 saw some of that in the back half of the season for the Vikings, just when they had Jaron Hall out there. Do- Dobbs obviously was a veteran, Mullins was a veteran, but still when they had that that carousel of guys, which is that they were run, they run a pretty complex offense in terms of, of the passing game, what they asked Kirk to do. Like Kirk is as vet as it gets in this offense. He knows every single check in the book. He'll make, he's willing to make every single throw. He trusts the offense completely. Like, you know, it's it's not that it's not so easy as saying, like, oh, when we have a rookie, let's take like our, you know, 25 simplest plays, start there and just kind of scale it up. Like, like, you know, it takes some coaxing. Like developing a guy's not that easy. So this is a big deal for Kevin O'Connell, who just like Obviously, I, I like Kevin O'Connell a lot. I, I, if you made me bet, I would bet that he, he's got a great plan to develop him in place. I think he's a really good and sharp coach. But it is a challenge, right? Like, they, as good as the environment is, there also is the, you know, how do we teach and work with a young guy when we've been literally, like, having the paragon of NFL veteran quarterbacks and Kirk Cousins. Just the most, like, I do what I'm told in this offense possible. Like, that, that is a big, substantial change for, for the coaching staff there in Minnesota. 